Good morning, uh, and thank you, Scylla, for those kind words of, of introduction. Uh, and thank you, too, for the, the metaphor, the, the metaphor of oxygen. It's a very powerful one, I think, and, and, and thinking about it breathing life into business and the economy, sustaining activity and growth. Now, my job in the next 15 minutes is to explain why a new conversation about advertising must be more than a conversation about all hot air. This is our second annual LEED Summit, and I'm inspired by how far we've come in just one short year. Advertising needs this platform. A summit which recognizes the role and the benefits of advertising. And when I look around me, I'm inspired by the senior representation from an impressive span of agencies, media owners, and brands. But the commitment I made last year went much further. I challenge you to push for greater recognition for advertising within government, regulators, and amongst consumer groups. And this morning, you will see real progress in achieving that aim. Now, I'm delighted that Maria Miller, the Secretary of State for Culture, Media, and Sport, is with us today. Maria is, of course, a former exec of Gray and at Texaco. So I'm confident that at least one member of the cabinet is open to a new conversation about the economic potential of advertising. Today is Maria's first public message to our industries. I will mark, it will mark, I hope, a fresh start for advertising, not just amongst policymakers at DCMS, but across the whole of government. A constructive agenda based not just on Maria's personal experience, but on cold, hard facts. Now, when I was preparing for this morning, I took a moment to look back at last year's event and came across James Best's commentary in the event program. His words are worth repeating. Advertising, he wrote, is not a separable component of our economy, but part of its very infrastructure. Everyone in this room understands that. The economic potential of advertising is fundamental. They understand its power to drive innovation so that products improve, to foster competition so that quality rises and prices drop, and to match buyers and sellers and to get people spending. We, and in particular James, of course, like to think of ourselves as intelligent people. But if we are going to stand up those assertions to clever thinkers outside our industry, we must apply some heavyweight economic analysis. Over the past year, that is exactly what we have done. Immediately following LEED 2012, I asked Kratos to commission a landmark economic report, a study not of the advertising industry, but of the effects of advertising activity across the entire UK economy. It was frankly an intimidating brief, and I am proud to be able to present the results here this morning. This is a remarkable piece of research, a real first. It has been produced by the global consulting firm Deloitte, which of course gives it enormous authority, drawing upon their knowledge not only of business, but of economic theory and econometric modeling. Delve into the appendices, and I'm sure many of you will, and you will get a sense of the scale of the task. The brief to understand the effect of advertising in the economy trips easily off the tongue. But it has taken big brains working hard with mountains of data for eight months to produce an analysis which is unprecedented in its scope and ambition. The analysis is complex, but it has resulted in some refreshingly simple conclusions and I think they could be game-changing. Three in particular stand out. This is my school, Long Sutton VA Primary School, a place that's very close to my heart. And I mention it because a key aim of this report is to understand and quantify the impact of advertising on UK GDP. Now, that figure, incredibly, is in the order of 100 billion pounds every single year. I'll say that again, 100 billion pounds. Or to put it another way, enough to pay not just for my old school, but for the government's entire education budget. That is 7% of total UK GDP, and it suggests 
that for every pound spent on advertising, six pounds is generated for the economy as a whole. Now, to put that in context, for most industries, the economic impact of a pound spent is in the range of two to four pounds. Now, your immediate reaction, like mine, I'm sure, may be one of complete disbelief. But think about it for a second. Think about the way advertising pervades every facet of business, about its unique ability to pit company against company, product against product. Think about its impact on competition in markets and about the fact that 60% of the UK's GDP is derived from household consumption. Think about it like that, and 100 billion pounds starts to feel conservative. And in fact, Deloitte, reassure me, it probably is. A, span, a pound spent on advertising, therefore, delivers real economic value in exactly the same way as, say, for example, investment in R&D or shovel-ready projects. And my conclusion from this, James was right. Advertising is as much a part of this country's economic infrastructure as our universities, our motorways, and the national grid. And if we're serious about growth, we must keep a focus on the consumer economy. It is no secret that advertising spend is heavily pro-cyclical. And that's why the IPA has argued for many years that when times are bad, ad investment becomes all the more powerful. And if increases in advertising spend accompany increases in economic growth, it is reasonable to ask whether the advertising is flowing from growing prosperity rather than the other way round. Which brings me to Deloitte's second game changer. Advertising spend is a cause of economic growth rather than an effect of it. Now that finding echoes some McKinsey analysis last year. It found that across the G20, some 15% of GDP growth can be ascribed to the, the effect of advertising. If we can find ways to stimulate advertising spend, growth will follow. Now, to steal back a phrase from David Cameron, advertising, it seems, is doing considerably more than it says on the tin. And what of the advertising industry itself? Here again, Deloitte suggests our contribution should be reappraised because of the number of UK jobs sustained. By um, sustained. That number, previously um, estimated at less than this, we reckon is now 550,000 jobs in total. Now, these jobs are not jobs created in the wider economy as a result of the 100, pound, 100 million pounds a year enabling effect. These are jobs that relate directly in or indirectly to spending on advertising services and media. What's more, they're very well paid jobs, in most cases anyway, rewarding and highly skilled. And as she is also the equalities minister, I'm sure that the Secretary of State will welcome the fact that in our world-class agency sector, 50% of those employed are women. Now, these conclusions are groundbreaking in their authority, but they are far from original. Writing over a century ago, Mark Twain observed that many a small thing had been made large by the right kind of advertising. But advertising, even in Twain's time, attracted more than its fair share of skeptics. And more recently, I would argue, regulators, consumer champions, policymakers, even ministers, have sometimes lost sight of the fact that advertising is indispensable as an engine for growth. That is why today, to government, I say, hit the accelerator, not the brake. This report should be a catalyst for a new conversation with government. Now is the time to speak up in Westminster and in Whitehall. Now, that job will be, will be made easier with such a powerful story to tell. But this report also includes tangible case studies, easily comprehensible to an, any busy MP or, indeed, any of their constituents. I'm back at school. Parents up and down the country know that in recent years, schoolware prices have tumbled and ranges have expanded. What they might not realize is that those benefits have been enabled by aggressive advertising by the major supermarket chains. Sainsbury's alone 
increased their schoolware ad spend by 330% between 2006 and 2010. And in the same period, the average price of schoolware dropped by 21%. If I turn to my own business for a second, Deloitte's work shows that BT's flatmates and the advertising of our competitors are driving the size of the broadband market in the UK, which in turn is growing and modernizing Britain's economy. Incredibly, Deloitte's estimates, without advertising, broadband would have penetrated into 36% fewer households. There is more, much more in this report, and each of you will have a copy to take away with you at the end of the day. Now, fresh thinking of this scale takes both effort and money, and I'd like to thank those who've made it possible. First, to Tim Lefroy and his team at the Advertising Association, who have skillfully guided this report from a call to arms at Leeds last year to a finished product. In particular, to Karen Fraser, James Best, and at the, the team at Credos for having both the ambition to take on the brief and the energy to follow it through. Perhaps most importantly, though, I'd like to, my thanks to go up to the association's members, and in particular, its front foot group. Without their commitment, both professional and financial, we would not be able to make the case for advertising in such a powerful way. It is, of course, also the Advertising Association that has brought us together today. And it should be quite a morning. But what then? What happens after we leave at lunchtime? LEAD 2013 offers advertising an opportunity. And it's an opportunity that I hope we will all seize. As business leaders, to spread the word and drive the debate, within trade associations, to find a single convincing voice on, the, on advertising's economic role through the Advertising Association, and within government and regulator to listen and respond. And I believe that with a little more focus, it will be easy for government to help. We're not looking for handouts or subsidies or even necessarily for government contracts, though I'm sure a few in the room may disagree with me on that point. What advertising needs is, to put it bluntly, for government and regulators to get out of the way. Set advertising free to make the biggest contribution we can. And specifically, that means tackling over-regulation where it stifles investment and undermines confidence. Help lower barriers, barriers to entry for advertising, particularly amongst SMEs. Back the Advertising Standards Authority as a strong, effective regulator. And support UK advertising as it embraces new technology and opportunities in the use of data where we can lead the world. Now, for reasons of culture, language, and geographical location, not to mention a little business talent, of course, the UK is already a global center of excellence for advertising, media, and marketing. Today, we have seen that there are 100 billion reasons to keep it that way. Government has a role to play, and so does everybody in this room today. I'm confident that we're finding the voice to make it happen, as you will hear in many different ways this morning. And to get us going on that, I'm going to pass back to Scylla. Thank you.